It's another sellout crowd at Cole Fieldhouse. They always make a lot of noise, especially against Carolina. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick, along with Dick Vitale. It's great to have you with us. Maryland is ranked fourth this week, about where you would expect. But North Carolina, against a very soft schedule, is only five and six. And Dick, for the first time ever, people see Carolina on the schedule and say, come on down. Well, they're saying, come on down, Mike. They want to get revenge. Last year, for example, Maryland lost twice to North Carolina. So you got to believe they're all fired. And when you look at North Carolina, for them to have any chance whatsoever, Jason Cable's got to play like a superstar. Chris Lang's going to have to dominate on the interior when he comes off the bench. And Brian Morrison, that's a player to follow. If he's knocking down the three like he did against Georgia Tech when he made six big ones and had 21 points, they'll have a chance. But they're playing against one of the best now in Juan Dixon and Lonnie Baxter. North Carolina and Maryland, always a good one. We'll be back in a moment. That love for independence to hang with the big boys and it's always good be ready for it industrial ride shop is they've got the largest selection of skate shoes in the valley and the best brands Ease, osiris dvs america globe circuit element volcom tsa early and more who else is going to hook you up like industrial ride shop nobody industrial ride shop here for the duration don't miss the big used car blowout going on this weekend at Burge Ford in Mesa. You got 99 bucks? That's all you'll need for a down payment this weekend. Want a $99 a month payment? It can happen during Burge Ford's amazing $99 used car clearance event. Don't worry about being short on cash. You can take up to 99 days to make your first payment. It's Burge Ford's amazing $99 used car clearance event going on now through Monday at Burge Ford's two locations, US 60 in Mesa Drive and Mesa Drive in Maine. We make savings simple. One had a dream. I have to go to college. The other had a couch. But they'll both need each other if they want to get out. I am an expert at escaping. Of Orange County, rated PG-13. Starts Friday. Want to see a bright idea from Crest? It's dual action whitening. It not only whitens your teeth, it helps keep them whiter by repelling new stains. For a smile that nothing can tarnish. Dual action whitening from Crest. Tell me something good. When you come to Jackson Hewitt for your taxes, you'll get a super fast refund. In fact, our typical refund is over $400 more than the average IRS refund. Call Jackson Hewitt now, 1-800-234-1040. When my time on earth is gone and my activities here are past, I want they bury me upside down and my critics can kiss my ass. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA Basketball is brought to you by Real Luxury at an Affordable Price. Buick, it's all good. North Carolina and Maryland from Cole Fieldhouse in College Park. Terps in the home, white trimmed in red, Carolina in the traditional blue. Her sticker with a surprise start. Maryland gets the opening tip, however, and Juan Dixon opens with a three. Mouton with a rebound and back to Blake. And has Blake, 7.1 assists a game. He's got a chance to be the best ever to play here, and the jump hook from Chris Wilcox, who has really become a factor on this ball club. And here comes the full guard pressure. They're going to try to force turnovers. Capel from the free throw line and hits it, and Adam Boone starting at the point. Instead of the freshman Melvin Scott, who did not play very well the last time out, also he's from Baltimore, and they thought maybe a little bit too much pressure on him to start the ball game. Play that's a big play right there. Capel hitting that jump shot from that guard. He didn't need a big time performance out of Capel. Capel eight to the ACC in scoring so far. Mouton with a miss. Baxter got a hand on it. Dixon saves a great hustle by Dixon. He's so quick, and a crowd here, the Turf fans love him. It's hard to believe it's the last year at Cole Fieldhouse, Mike. Comcast Center next season. Inside and a jam by Wilcox. He's got great legs. Last 10 games, he's almost averaging a double-double. 
Manuel, 10 points a game and 8 rebounds a game. Freshman Jackie Manuel and Boone in the backcourt for North Carolina. Will Johnson. They rely so much on Capel. Capel for three. Too strong. The clear out by Mouton. And the foul will be on Will Johnson. Take a look at the Bank of America lineups. Capel and Johnson up front. First sticker in the pivot. Manuel and Boone, the guards tonight. Mouton for Maryland along with Wilcox. Baxter, the center. Dixon and Blake are the guards. Matt Doherty in his second season. And this might be a real test for him this year. Five and six. Gary Williams, who had that magnificent Final Four season a year ago. And has certainly joined the elite in college basketball in the coaching ranks. Well, he's won 21 of his last 25 uh, with that run to the Final Four last year. 11 and 2 this year. Lost that first game to Arizona. And then got beat on a glass big time by Kelvin Sampson at Oklahoma. He is only the 10th coach ever to win 100 ACC games. He's been a winner everywhere he's been, and he's traveled Big East, Big Ten. Dixon is a great three-point shooter, drains the three. Oh, I tell you, I was telling you before the game, it's hard to believe he could become the all-time leading scorer in the history of Maryland basketball. Loose ball underneath that record currently held by the late Len Bias. You talk about a special player, what a talent this the Bias was. He gave us a lot of thrills here, all up and down Tobacco Road. He had one great game against North Carolina, North Carolina. when he was electrified. Look at the strip. Nice reach. Oh, don't look back. He looked back. you got to go right to the basket and score. Boone doesn't possess a lot of speed, but it's very heady. He's got a good IQ for the game, and he's been playing better at that point guard slot. Rare turnover for Blake, who is better than 2-1 to one assist to turnover. Dixon. Wilcox got a piece of it. Mouton was also in there. Byron Mouton's not going to blast against that zone. North Carolina's zoning. They're getting into the gaps of that zone. Very tough to block out of that zone. Maryland's defense. Blake would rather get the assist than the bucket, and Mouton will score. It's 11 4. They do a great job off the turnover. Very unselfish Blake. Showing why he's one of the premier passers in the basketball. Very unselfish. Finding the open man for the layup, and the turf fans love it. Blake already has three assists in the first 259 of this game. There's a look at Blake right now. Look, he's under control. He knows he has the trailer, and there he is dishing the rock, and Mouton finishes it off. I love players that are so unselfish. Came out of Oak Hill Academy. Played with Ron Slay there and now starring for Tennessee. Travis Watson at Virginia. What's happened to Virginia? Well, I don't know. Bang, bang. They lose wow. a couple after going undefeated. But what's happened to a lot of people? What happened to Duke against Florida State? I knew. We had to mention that. That was Shock City. Especially Florida State losing to Western Carolina, Northwestern. They lose. Unbelievable American University. Yet they find a way to beat the Dukies. What a win for Steve Robinson. Oh, and believe me, I heard all about that here tonight. Everywhere I walked, the Maryland fans reminded me. Dickie V, talk about Duke. Double team on Manuel, got rid of it inside to Capel. Good job of finding the open Jason man at the Capel. high post off the trap, and Capel takes it right to the basket. He's averaging 16.9 a game and 10.9 rebounds, leading the ACC in rebound. He's had a great year, just hasn't had a lot of help so far. There's that 2-3 zone, a lot of gaps in that zone. Wilcox tries to penetrate, nice block by Burstecker, saved by Maryland, and Dixon pumps from three. Juan Dixon. Well, there's the block shot, and they convert the block shot to a trifecta. He's one of the big-time players in America, certainly one of the top ten in the nation. Dixon out of Baltimore, the number seven all-time scorer for Maryland. Manuel goes into the lane, gets caught up in the air, and turns it over. Backward experience. The edge goes big-time to Maryland here tonight. North Carolina making young mistakes. Nice head fake by Dixon. Leans into a mid-range jumper. He's going to have a big night, Mike. Get ready for a big night. He's out of already had Dixon. one. Dickie has eight. He has eight already. He's got fire in four minutes. And it's 16-6, the first double-digit lead. First sticker slashes right home. Good diagonal pass. Burst sticker gave him good minutes in him for a win over St. Joe's. I know everybody got excited with that win, but St. Joe's played without their scoring machine, Marvin O'Connor. Dixon, oh, what a great pass. Wilcox.
Fox with a bucket in the foul on first sticker. Well, right now, that zone's got some big seams in it, and Maryland, with their experience, are finding those gaps. Watch him find a gap right here. Fakes the jump shot, drives it down the inside, and Wilcox will go to the free throw line. One of the reasons that's so effective is you expect him to take the shot. You expect him to shot. Talk about great backcourt. you got to put Blake and Dixon right up there with the best. Wilcox, who is shooting only 41% in the free throw line, hits that one. I just wonder why at Maryland they have such a thought of the Dukies all the time. I could not walk in with their students and fans without hearing about Duke losing to Florida State. And they're calling me Dookie Vital. You know what? I love that anyway. <laughs> you think, do you think you could walk into any other arena in the <laughs> ACC and not hear the same thing? Exactly. Right. That's because of the dominance over the years. That's the respect. Oh, look at a turnover. Simple turnover. Jawad Williams comes in for the first time, gets the rebound, and then loses it. Maryland with great passing and great shooting. They've got a nine-point lead. ESPN and ESPN2, home of the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship. The smooth ride of a luxury car. The seating capacity of a minivan. Capabilities of an SUV. All in one totally innovative package. Introducing the all new 2002 Buick Rendezvous. What? You were expecting Igor? <laughs> Buick Rendezvous. It's all good. Who sings that? The Seekers. Who sings that? The Seekers. No. Cornelius Brothers and Sister Rose, 1972. You want expert answers whenever you need them? Come to Office Depot, where our people listen, understand, and help. How can I get organized? The new generation of handhelds. It'd be nice if everything was like that. Mm. Office Depot. What you need, what you need to know. Kurt! Huh? Psst! Down here! There's a new chunky soup! Mom? Huh? Don't fumble that bowl, baby! Whoa. <laughs> Chunky Chicken and Dumplings is loaded with big chunks of chicken, veggies, and hearty home-style dumplings to fill you up right. Hey, your head's on my shoulders. Your head. Your head's on my shoulder, man. Dumplings. New Campbell's Chunky Home-Style Classics. Like Mom used to make. John Saunders back in the studio. Georgia facing Kentucky. Julius Camaro will come up with the ball, take it coast to coast. Make it like a guard before he jams it down. Close game, though. Kentucky's only up by one. Meanwhile, Notre Dame, the Irish are getting clobbered by West Virginia. Mike and Dick. Thank you, John. It's 17-8. The Terps on top of the Tar Heels. 15-23 to go, first half. And Maryland basketball. Inbounds to Dixon for three and missed it. The rebound to Jawad Williams, the freshman from Cleveland. He's got a good future. He's just got to get a little familiar with college basketball and speed of the game. There's a turnover as the steal leader in the ACC. And Dixon was trying to bait somebody into fouling him at the same time. Juan Dixon could end up number one all time in the Technical ACC. Team. And Matt Doherty has just picked up a tee from Carl Hess. That won't help. That's a lot of frustration right there out of Matt Doherty. In their last game against Wake Forest, he broke that clipboard on that sideline out of frustration. And you can understand it. He's a competitor. There's the turnover. There's Dixon. Four years in a row, Maryland's now had the leading steal leader in the ACC. I think what he wanted on that play was a carry on Dixon. I think he had a pretty good argument. Yeah. There he is. He's saying the carry. Not going to get away from being that active, though, and not get a team. Dixon has already had 11 points in five minutes. Tell Marty to get ready to put 30 in the book. Marty Aronoff, our superstar stat guy, get ready to put 30 in the book for Dixon tonight. Dixon third in the ACC coming in, 18 points a game. They are so experienced. You can see that experience, especially on the perimeter against North Carolina. 15.01 to go first half. Maryland up already by 13. And you get the feeling, Dick, with the mismatch, the obvious mismatch in talent level right here, North Carolina either stops the mistakes or they get blown out. Well, no doubt about it, Mike. We knew that before the game started. We talked about they can't turn the ball over against the trap. And you know Gary's clubs are going to trap and press. 
Adam Boone with a three, and they've got to hit the three-point shot as well. Morris and Boone are going to have to make some more of those shots. That three-point shot has a way of giving you a little bit more momentum, a little confidence. They're in the zone because they can't match up man-to-man -man and play them head-to-head. -head. Dixon and Blake outside for Maryland. They get great spacing. They understand how to play both guys. So familiar with each other. Baxter tries to power it up. Had it blocked inside by Lang. He's coming back from an ankle injury. And Lang's been out with a knee injury that he had a straight knee. Morrison had a chance on the outside. Takes it inside. Williams scores and he's fouled by Mouton. Nice look by Morrison. He's the one player they have that can... He can beat people and go from A to spot B and get there with quickness. He's had some big moments. In games that North Carolina has won, he has played well, Morrison. In games that they've lost, he has struggled. We're going to see the block shot right here on Baxter. There's the block shot. Just shows you how much more Lang has gained strength this year. He had a big game against Indiana and a loss to the Hoosiers. He had 27, was really effective. He was playing well against Kentucky before he got sick of that game. Blake dumps it to Wilcox, and Wilcox is fouled. That'll be on Capel, his first. The other thing about North Carolina right now, Dick, Capel and Lang are their best inside players, and they're both playing out of position. Yeah, they're right now, when you look at North Carolina, they lack that superstar, the guy that we've seen over the years. They've always had a one-two tandem, NBA quality players. Think about a Stackhouse and a Wallace. You think about a, a Carter and a Jameson. Right. Or even last year, Brendan Haywood, who's playing well now with the Wizards and, and Joe Forte. Forte. Plus, the other thing that's hurting them right now is that uh, their great two-way athlete, Julius Peppers, is going to enter the NFL draft and will not play basketball this year. And Peppers gave them so much more than just the numbers he put up. He was an emotional leader for this team, and he gave them toughness. Well, you remember last year he had a big game. I remember, I think he had 18 against Maryland, played super, beating the, the Turks. Taj Holden and Drew Nicholas are in for Maryland as Gary Williams goes to his bench. Another turnover, and that's a travel on Mouton. North Carolina's shot in this game tonight is, number one, they have to reduce the turnovers, and number two, make some perimeter shots. Another steal. He's super. He's absolutely unbelievable. He could be a defensive back. He has such great anticipation. These are just awful freshman mistakes. Six turnovers for the Tar Heels the first six minutes of the ball game. Williams underneath, double-teamed, travel. Yeah, he walked. He definitely picked up the pivot foot. They give you that diagonal pass. It's available, but they recover. Now watch Dixon. Look at his speed. Unbelievable. Great anticipation. They throw the little lob up there, telegraphed it, and he anticipated it and converted it. Wilcox, good defense by Morrison. Couldn't get it away, though. Oh, no. Wilcox spins. Terps oh, keep it alive. Nicholas down the lane. Offensive foul on Nicholas. He was out of control going down that lane. You know, you look at that North Carolina jersey, and you think of all the tradition and all the pride and those streaks we talk about. 37 consecutive years, number one, two, three in a conference. 27 consecutive NCAA births. 31 years in a row, winning 20 or more games. Unbelievable numbers, and they never had an NCAA injury. That tells you how That's clean right. and how first class they have been at North Carolina. The 37 in a row, first, second, or third in the ACC, to me, is the most amazing statistic I have ever seen in basketball. Especially in a conference that year in and year out has such tough competition. Yeah, this is not the big grungy. This is the ACC. Yeah, it's not Cupcake City. Blake on the run. Holden is the plane. Lies Holden. Uh, wide open. Man and a red bag in New Jersey buries the three. Wide open in a ball reversal in the secondary phase in their transition game. Have that wide open jump shot up on top. Good skip pass to Capel, but he can't do anything with it. Lang goes down the lane. He's fouled on the way in. When Taj look, Holden will pick it up. When you look at North Carolina and the components that they have to work with in that Darty right now. You see a lot of good players that belong in Division One, but they are what we call complementary players who, if surrounded with two superstars, will blend into an outstanding team. But right now, complementary players are asked to be options number one and two, and that is tough. Morrison has his pocket. 
basket pick by Juan Dixon. It's happened to a lot of guys in the last three and a half years. Blake with a running hook. A little out of control there, and Lang with a rebound to Morris. And there aren't many people are going to feel sorry for him, Mike. All no hope. Capel for three. Got it. Jason. North Carolina with all these mistakes hanging around. They're down by a dozen. Jason Cable showing his range as a shooter. His dad just came back and coached in a developmental league in Fayetteville. He play some tiny archer balls, going to the NBA office. Had been the head coach at ODU. Holden with a foul. Holden to Wilcox. Only pulling in for that roll. Losing Mr. Morris. The one player I think Maryland misses in its mix is Danny Miller, who transferred. I really believe that. He was a good role player. Another poor pass, cross-court intercepted, Nicholas score. They're doing it just like they do in practice right now. They are absolutely on fire. And the Terp fans jump with joy. There's jubilation here. Oh, they are excited. Textbook pressure defense by Merrill and the Terps take a 32-16 lead. And we're not halfway through the opening 20 minutes. Maryland right now would be on a pace to score 159 tonight. I'll tell you one thing, the way they are defending, their defense is creating offense. That's what's happening right now. They're anticipating so well the mighty Marvels. Take a look at this. Baxter, Dixon, Wilcox. Dick, it is really difficult when you don't have somebody that can get dribble penetration through that pressure when you have to pass all the time and you don't have great speed. Exactly. I'll tell you the one guy, if he had returned, and I thought he should have, was Joseph Forte. They would have been a different basketball team. You would have been looking at 20 points, 23 every night, 20 to 23. He would have improved his stock. He hasn't played hardly at no. all with the Celtics. I got him on the injured list, but I think that's just the way of hoping that he develops and learns how to be a point guard and learns how to be a ball handler, which he could have learned while he was at school. Certainly the chemistry with he and his teammates was not there at the end of the year. No, at the end of the year it became a problem. And you know what's amazing? They had one 18 in a row as Lang hits that 15 foot jump shot and they got elevated to number one in the nation. Blake, he can shoot it, just doesn't do it very often. They're going to be very tough to be on this floor by anybody. Morrison trying to penetrate the lob knocked away by Holden. Maryland basketball. And a travel. It'll go over to Carolina. Last time they went undefeated at home was in 94-95. There was 16 and 7. And they're going to be tough to beat on his floor here this year. 11-13 to go first half. Back after this. Oh, what a day. The seating capacity of a minivan. Capabilities of an SUV. The smooth ride of a luxury car. All in one, totally innovative package. The all new Buick Rendezvous. I guess we're not in Kansas anymore. Buick Rendezvous. It's all good. Are you Tiger Woods? Presenting the first women's bobsled event in Olympic history. This happens in competition. He's toast. And while they'll do whatever it takes to win, all it takes to see it is your Visa card. The only card accepted at the Olympic Winter Games. Nothing like the open road. Yeah, too bad we're out of gas. Oh, somebody's coming. Hey, buddy, how about a lift? <laughs> no riders. Not even for a dollar. Dollar don't buy much, mister. It does if you dial 10, 10, 2, 20. Yeah, all calls up to 20 minutes are 99 cents. Yep, and 7 cents a minute after 20. 20 minutes or 99 cents? You bought yourself a ride. You gotta sit in the back. Great trip. Oh, be quiet. Dial 10, 10, 2, 20. Got a little treat with your basketball game. It's been a treat for Maryland. They're on top 35 to 18. One thing you'll see this year, I think a lot of teams, 
If they get a chance to lay the wood to North Carolina, they're going to do it because they beat them so many times for so many years. Oh, they've had so much in a way of tradition and pounded on people and winning so many basketball games that people see that jersey. Like Notre Dame in football, people want to pound them for all the history that they have. I think also they're feeling the effects of coaching changes two and three years. That's certainly not easy. They lost out in some really top-notch big players last year where they could have had some size. Scott comes into the ball game, misses the three. Loose ball knocked away with three by Cable and knocked out of bounds to Merrill. They've always had at least two first rounders in their lineup, and they don't have that. You got a feel for how hard Matt Gardy and his staff works. I know they've done a phenomenal job in recruiting, though, Mike. People better have their fun now because things will change. Whistle in the lane. The foul's going to be on Taj Holden. That will be his second. Coming up next at 9.30, Diaper Dandy, Jawan Wagner, and John Calipari's Memphis Tigers will go against TCU. It's college basketball coming your way later tonight on ESPN2. For more, log on to ESPN.com. You watch that, baby, and you may see, because Billy, Billy Tubbs' philosophy is we'll give you 110 if we can get 111. Dewan Wagner may go for about 40 in that game. Defense is the structure around uh, D-yard. <laughs> Another poor pass this time by Morrison. They're doing a poor job attacking the press. They're waiting for the ball to come to all this. Beautiful drive by Blake to Ryan Randall, the Allegheny Community College student who comes into Maryland as a junior. And Blake with five assists. And Randall's helped them inside. Yeah, he played well against the last game, Norfolk State. Obviously not a big-time opponent for them. But he gave them some good minutes, which should give them some confidence. He's a big, strong inside player who can get into their rotation. But that was a tremendous look by Blake. So unselfish. Foul on Lang was his first. I had my treat here already today, man. I got a pitcher, got a hug with Red Arback. As we see here, the little dish, Randall with the score, Sam Jones, Jerry Lucas. Let me guess. Red hugged, you hugged Red. It wasn't the other way around. We hugged each other. All right, there he is, the him. legend. God bless him, 84 years of age. Our guy Digger Phelps is in the house as well. Jerry Lucas will be going to Fred Taylor's funeral, he said, on Saturday. Play Sam Jones is here, one of Red's great players with Boston. Lucas was such a great player Ohio State. Cable doesn't get the roll. Johnson offensive rebound and back to Cable. Manual. Johnson with a rebound and pushed off to get it. Johnson, an outstanding student academically. Had a nice game against Indiana when he got a start against the Hoosiers early this year. They lost that game, but they played with a lot of emotion and intensity. And he played was terrific at 27, as you look here. Nine to one in steals. North Carolina with 11 turnovers for the ball game. Well, that steal total has led to layups. What a great move by Wilcox. Realizing he's double teamed, just turned around and almost tipped it up and in. Good hands. 40 to 18, and Maryland just withering that press. And they are really trapped in a press and it's scrapping defensively. Line drive jump shot by Johnson is short. Didn't have a good look. Blake. Good spacing. Gary's club really well drilled. Juan Dixon back in. Can't get by Manuel, who's a pretty good defender. He's got those long arms and manages to stay in front of guys. They think that Manuel Scott and certainly Jawad Williams ultimately are going to be positive players in their system. There's the look inside. Look at the quick release. He anticipated that. He saw the double team. What a quick release inside by Wilcox. Wilcox, turnaround jumper in and out. The foul will be on Capel. That'll be two on Jason Capel. They have a tough date on Saturday. They're going to have a hungry Virginia team down there. Oh, to be in Chapel Hill. Virginia coming off those two losses. And they got a really tough talking to Woody Durham before the game. Four of the next six games are on the road. As you look at Woody, what a legend. You talk about he sure and Johnny Holiday, two great guys, the voice of Maryland and the voice of North Carolina. And some wonderful broadcasters in this league as well. There as, he is. As well as wonderful basketball teams. There's Johnny Holiday. He's a legend down here in this area, and I know Woody's so proud of his son, Wes, as well. Down West down to Georgia Tech. Tech. Wilcox free throw hits. 
Those guys have such a passion for their local teams. Just like when Taywood Ledford at Kentucky, it was so nice. They named the floor at Rupp Arena That's after terrific. Taywood Ledford. That's terrific. Full court pressure. And why not? They're just going to keep coming at them all day long. Scott and Manuel now the backcourt. Johnson, Capel, and Lang up front. Manuel tries to spin against the wrong guy. Juan Dixon, you're not going to get by him very often. Well, North Carolina has not been able to do what their number one option was before the game, according to their coach, Matt Barney, to us, was number one. We have to control tempo, and they have not been able to do it. Lang fell away. Missed the shot. Wilcox with a tip, and the rebound to Lang. Lake did a great job of getting into the lane. There's another steal by Dixon, stolen back by Melvin Scott, then he loses it. Mouton. That's a nice move to pull up. If he goes any further, he's in trouble against the taller lane. Exactly, and he goes up and shoots the little jumper, and he's under control as he shoots it. 43-18. Coming off, Mike, it makes it even tougher. They're coming off the worst loss that they suffered ever at the Dean Dome in 16 years, losing by 20, 22. 22. 22 to Wake Forest. Lang is great with that jump hook from either side. And that's really the first crack he's had at it on offense. We've played almost 12 minutes. He's had that knee problem. They also felt that Burstickler outworked him in practice and earned the starting role. Dixon goes low to Wilcox. He'll try his own jump hook over Lang. That was a bad shot. Should have kicked it right out to the open. Dixon was right there. He's looking up and saying, hey, wait a minute. I'm an All-American. You bring the ball back to me. Melvin Scott, the freshman from Baltimore, will call out the play. He's guarded by Blake. He's learning how to be a point guard. That's not really his normal slot. That's probably one of the most difficult transitions to make, to be the scorer, to understand the role of a point guard. Ball was kicked. They'll get a new 35 on the shot clock, and we've got a timeout with 7.30 to go. Maryland hitting on all cylinders. They're up by 23. Chickens have breasts, wings, and thighs. But no one has ever found the nuggets on a chicken. It's not there either. Introducing chicken breast strips from Carl's Jr. Because chickens don't have nuggets. Fox and TV Land present this TV Land moment. Early alternatives to your local phone company. Hello. Hello, Control Central, what's the matter? Oh, my tie is busy. Well, uh, <laughs> put me on my handkerchief, extension four. Uh, never mind the handkerchief, Central. My belt is ringing. Watch Get Smart, weeknights on TV Land, brought to you by Cox Digital Telephone Service. For Cox Digital Telephone Service, call 623-594-1122. Guys, listen to me. The Spartans cannot rebound. I never figured you for a fibber, Paul. Whoa, Coach Izzo and Chris Fowler. Paul, MSU specializes in getting in position, boxing out, and grabbing boards. If you watch College Hoops tonight, you'd know that, and you wouldn't have been dishonest. I guess that was a tall tale. <laughs> Any taller, and you'd be on the team. Team! <laughs> <laughs> Remember, to know is to love. College Hoops tonight on ESPN and ESPN2. Boston College and Villanova. Kenny Walls gets lined up, turns, squares, fires. The three-pointer is good. Boston College leading by five. Kentucky and Georgia remaining close. The Wildcats with a 53-48 lead. 43-20. Maryland over North Carolina. 7.30 to go in the first half. I'm not sure she knows exactly <laughs> what she's witnessing. Not to... Uh, not brushed up on the, her history of this series. I tell you, Marilyn Gary has to be pleased with their effort thus far defensively. They've been sensational. This table showing that range as a shooter for a big guy. Gary Williams wasn't happy about that one because no one challenged Capel at all. He drains the three. Well, you got to watch out with a big lead like this. That you get yourself a little slop right now. North Carolina has 10 field goals in this half. They have 12 turnovers. 
You talk about a fighter right now. He looks as though he's down by 20. And that's what makes him successful. There's no back off in that guy at all. 7.04 to go first half. Trying to invite him to a trapping area on the side. You don't want to pick up your dribble. There's a no-no. And this is the kind of thing that killed him against Wake Forest. And Wake Forest doesn't have the pressure that Maryland does. Dixon with five steals. Tomorrow night on ESPN, 9.30 Eastern. It's an important ACC matchup. And we'll have Jason Williams and the Duke Blue Devils against Tony Akins. And that will come to you live from Cameron Indoor. And Georgia Tech's got to be thinking, thanks for losing that game just before you play us. Wow. You're going to be there, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you'll be down there for that game in Cameron Indoor Stadium. They can't hear me say that, those Turk fans, can they? I think I'm everywhere this week. Morrison hits a jumper for three, and it's 43 to 26. Gary Williams is not going to be happy because his team trying to let North Carolina back in this game. Well, Here's well, the game summary as the Heels have hit eight points in a row. Maryland shooting 57%, North Carolina 53 but the Tar Heels with far fewer opportunities. Well, what they're going to have to do is certainly defend better. They're certainly when they're getting an opportunity to shoot the basketball, they're converting, shooting better than 50%, but they're going to have to protect the basketball and do a better job defending. They have not shown that they can defend Maryland and stop them, whether they zone or man-to-man. Wow. Brendan Haywood, now a member of the Washington Wizards. Doing well, too. The uh, former center for the North Carolina Tar Heels. Taking a lot of the Wizards are doing well because there's a certain guy who unretired. Yeah, by the name of Michael the Mag Magnificent. Hey, how's this for an old Tar Heel team in the NBA? Jordan, Stackhouse, Wallace, Carter, and Jameson. <laughs> yeah. Not bad. 16 points now for Juan Dixon. Dixon just so in tune, so focused defensively, offensively. First sticker, good head fake, didn't miss the shot. Baxter back in, grabs the rebound. Dixon will be the first guy to be three-time Maryland Turb, three times all ACC since John Lucas. John Lucas. Well, Lucas's son is playing well for Baylor and David Bliss is 12. Freshman. John now coaching the Cavs. Lonnie Baxter, by the way, only has one shot so far tonight. Certainly they haven't needed him up by 19. I think he still feels the effects of an ankle injury coming back today. They haven't needed him inside. Moton, a little bit of out of control, but then gets himself together at the baseline. Gets the jumper. Mouton has eight, and the lead's back to 21. He brings a good energy to the team and a nice little touch. He's got good mid-range ability. I tell you, watch them play. It's hard to believe they were dominated like they were by Oklahoma down there in Sooner country where Kelvin Sampson would be one of my choices. I'd probably give the edge right now to Bob Knight as my midseason coach of the year. Jawad Williams, nice touch inside. Uh, following with Sampson and Ben Howland from out of Pittsburgh, who's 15-1 and one and nobody knows about it. It's amazing. Had that a big... loss at Oklahoma for Maryland, you could just tell. Oh, Things nice. were not going well. Tom with a great pass to Dixon. Mike, you could make layups against that kind of defense. Hello. And against that kind of defense. Back the other way. Williams out hustled everybody and then draws the foul on top of it. Well, you know, Williams came in as a McDonald's All-American, and he's got good raw potential. You see his body and his elevation, and he's got a chance to be a really good player. They got a kid coming in next year. Trust me, he's going to be special. Raymond Felton from Latter, South Carolina. And Rashad McCants from out of New Hampton Prep. And they got Sean May, which is Scott May's son, from Bloomington, who said no to the Hoosiers, and he'll be playing, and he'll be a that? that was a big upset getting him away from Mike Davis. And I the think Hoosiers. there ought to be a rule. If your dad was an All-American at the school, no, you've got to cool. go there. <laughs> He wants his own identity. I know, but I love the history. Dixon with a miss. Baxter with a rebound. Powers his way in. Snatches it again and is fouled. And every time he goes down, Gary Williams' heart goes into his throat. He was brilliant last year. He was the MVP of the region. Had a brilliant game against Stanford. They won that West region. In fact, when they went West, they were playing schools from this area. They played George Mason and Georgetown and Georgia State. 
fact, because of them, they've made an adjustment now that they can put you in a local area in the first two uh, rounds of your games. They could have driven 15 miles and played two of the two out of the three. Instead, they had to go all the way across country, and Baxter misses the free throw. Baxter's had some trouble at the line, 56.6%, and missed both of those badly. Talk about trouble at the line. What about Jason Williams the other day? Hold for six, and especially late in the game when he's automatically usually Mr. Clutch. Baxter has just reached the 1,500 point mark, and if he can get to 1,000 rebounds this year, and probably will, he'll be the first guy ever to do it. They'll go 1,500 and 1,000. There's only one other rebounder with 1,000. Lenny Elbow. Lenny. Our guy. Nice touch. Jawad Williams coming off the bench to show us something. He's Jawad four for four. Williams. Lenny's such a great role model for youngsters as well. Good NBA career. Then went to Harvard Law School. Now working at ESPN. Lenny Elbow. Mouton in and out. Rebound to Lang. North Carolina's done a good job in terms of Getting when they've gotten shots converting, but Maryland's defense has created such havoc with the pressure. Capel, nice move to take the jump shot in the face of Wilkins. Here come the heels. Now they cut it to 15. Crowd getting a little restless here at Cole. Six nothing run. They got to find a way to come up with a stop. Oh, nice cut by Moton. Those are layups, Mike. Those are layups. Simple give and go. There's nobody beating people to the basketball. Gaps and seams, wide open shots. 51 34. Melvin Scott, the freshman, brings it up. Scott will take a three and got it. He's at home. Can't trade, though, now when you're down like this. You can't trade. Gowdy's not happy with their defense and their half-court defense. Happy with their full-court defense, but not their half-court defense. Scott, a 33% long-range shooter in his freshman year. He's really one of those guys that can play either guard, but I think he's more comfortable as a shooter. Yeah, he's a combination guard. Got good quickness. The 2002 PGA Tour continues on ESPN in prime time. Sergio trying to win his second tournament in as many weeks. Our coverage starts tomorrow at 7 Eastern, continues Friday at 7 Eastern, Saturday at 8 Eastern, and then Sunday at 8 Eastern. For more, log on to ESPN.com. That will be the Sony Open from Hawaii, and Sergio was brilliant in that opening tournament. Yeah, you give me some tips today in golf. Unbelievable. Look at that three up. I mean, you talk about Hall of Famers. Sam Jones all the way would be to your right if you're watching on TV. In the middle, Jerry Lucas and in red arm back, the father of the NBA. And Lucas, certainly right now, very sad with the passing of Fred, Fred Taylor. 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 His coach Johnson. at Ohio State. Yep. Also, we lost Alan Malvo, one of the great teachers that a lot of people weren't familiar with who taught the theory of ball you man defense st mary's elizabeth high school and then over west point and at st john's with luke harnesecker a maryland turnover with 241 to go in the half the lead's down to 14. okay good news that broadband thing we all want got it figured out honey you call the phone company Tracy, you're digging the trench, shovels in the garage. I'm going up on the roof to assess the satellite possibilities. Timmy, check out these schematics. Appreciate it. Let's go! Run in! We know how you feel, and that's why Circuit City offers one-stop high-speed internet access. You can find what's available where, compare options, and arrange installation. Circuit City, we're with you. Yeah, we can get broadband at Circuit City. Uh, oh. Tell me something good. When you come to Jackson Hewitt for your taxes, you'll get a super fast refund. In fact, our typical refund is over $400 more than the average IRS refund. Call Jackson Hewitt now, 1-800-234-1040. You wanna make a click call, dial to the center, it's 1-800-C-A-L-L-A-T-T. -T. It's free for you and cheap for them. <laughs> Two minutes, bad acting. Well, at least I know how to skate. Save big bucks on every call. Just dial 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls. Bringing home the gold. McDonald's, a worldwide Olympic partner.
North Carolina is shooting 64% from the floor to stay in this one. They're making shots. They're not making shots. This is really blowout city. If you're a Matt Doherty right now in North Carolina, psychologically you play yourself a two-minute game, hoping that you can get a little spurt to get this. It would be a psychological victory for them to go to the locker room under 10. I think under 15 would be pretty good, too. The deficit is big as much as 25. They've cut it to 14. And here's the full court pressure again. And it wasn't that Maryland stopped hustling. It's just the fact that North Carolina's been making shots once they've gotten the ball away from the traps. And they have adjusted at least a little to that full court pressure. Capel, nice head fake to get inside, tries the reverse. Johnson kept it alive, and here comes Blake. Should have shot the ball on this side of the basket. Jason tried to make that extra maneuver to use the basket as a wedge, and he didn't need to go to the other side for the reversal. I got a fresh 35 after the kick by Capel. I tell you, Capel, you talk about versatility, and you look across America, and I know they're shorthanded right now. He's one of my, I call my all Will Smith team. I love Will Smith as an actor, comedian, singer, very versatile. To me, the most versatile player in America is Michael Dunleavy. And then you talk after Dunleavy, I mean, you're going to love him tomorrow, Mike. He's so complete. Jason Capono out at UCLA. Think about guys like Jared Jeffries, outstanding down in Indiana in a big game against Michigan State. Juan Dixon. Dick, I think I've seen Dunleavy a couple of times before. Yeah, but this year for the first <laughs> yeah. time. Oh, I know. You'll love him. He's really improved, put on a lot of weight. Juan Dixon already has 20. And Holy cow. There's the block shot. It's great to hear you say holy cow again. <laughs> when you come flying at somebody out of that corner and smash it into the cheap seat. Oh, yeah, but we're at 15 blocks on <laughs> Wilcox reached in and that's a jump ball. But Red Arback is saying, wait a minute. My guy, Bill Russell, used to block it, and he used to always oh, be yeah. on the court and go the other way. Yeah, and Sam right. would bank it off the glass as Mr. Arbeck would sit there and go. Russell, block shot, Cousy around his back to Sam Jones off the glass. Got an assist off a lot of those yeah. blocks. And if Sam didn't take Cousy out for dinner, he'd go the other way and give it a Charmin. <laughs> Manuel and Scott, four on the shot clock. Somebody's got to take it, Johnson. Poor pass. Manuel in the middle. He didn't get the shot off in time. The Jackson Hewitt halftime report coming up momentarily. John Saunders and Jay Billis. They'll be following number two, Florida against Tennessee. George against number nine, Kentucky. And Jay will have some comments on the ACC. Another block. Wilcox got a hand on it, and that time Scott really invited himself into trouble. I think also they're feeling the effects of North Carolina of coaching changes two and three years. That certainly affects the situation, but Matt Doherty, like I said in his staff, they have a top five recruiting class coming in next year, but that can't help them tonight. Well, and that's very interesting, Dick, because the people in North Carolina, all the fans, the people who have been so loyal to that program for so long, are going to be experiencing something they have never experienced. It'll be fascinating to see how it goes this year. And they have to stay there and support these kids and support the program for all that history of outstanding basketball. It's a tough time right now. Wilcox, soft touch. Wilcox has a dozen the leads back to 18. So after North Carolina cuts into it, Maryland builds it right back. And there's an m, &M on the inside again. And this match defensively have no answer defensively. Lang keeps taking the ball a long way away from the basket. Where he can't Wilcox with another ball. He's trailer. He's got the trailer. Good fake was three for a second, then hesitated into the block for Wilcox. Are you kidding me? Mouton reverse. Capel with a basketball. Ten seconds to go in the half. They just left the athleticism, and they just don't have in that blue uniform what they've had in the past, and they're going to pay for it. Scott Stripped and Ron Dixon comes around, throws it over his shoulder. Finish on the inside. 
Sean spinning in the lane. Mr. Wilcox says, Sean Saunders, Jay Billis, how do you like that, baby? Maryland shoots 59% from the field, and at the half, they lead by 20. Let's go back to the studio and John Saunders. John. All right, guys, thanks a lot. 20-point lead there could have been much worse, though. Stick around. We'll come back with more scores and highlights. Look around the SEC and see how Kentucky is doing. It's all coming up next. Hurricane blew through Pasadena. Now, Sports Illustrated honors the undefeated Miami Hurricanes with three great gifts. It's a fantastic national championship package, free with your paid subscription. Start out with this special Sports Illustrated hardbound collector's issue. It's a celebration of Miami football, a great way to honor the Hurricanes' spectacular season. It's gold-lettered and individually numbered, a cherished keepsake you'll treasure forever. Call now and you'll also get this collectible football designed exclusively for Sports Illustrated in celebration of Miami's fifth national championship. Both are free when you order 55 issues of Sports Illustrated for only $1.59 an issue. Save 50% off the cover price. When you use your credit card, you'll also get another great gift available only from Sports Illustrated. This Miami national championship at free. Celebrate the number one team in the nation with three great gifts from Sports Illustrated. Get into it. The all-new Kia Spectra. Drive one and at some moment, it'll hit you. The moment you realize you can actually afford a car available with air conditioning and power windows. Plus, Kia's 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. We don't know where or when, but it will hit you. Thank you! Introducing the 2002 Kia Spectra. Get a thousand cash back at 1.9% APR through January 31st. A veil of mystery. A deadly secret. A dark power. Now, two men have been sent to uncover the truth. Universal Pictures is proud to present the stunning cinematic vision that took Europe by storm. Discover the secret of the Brotherhood. Brotherhood of the Wolf. Rated R at select theaters this Friday. You're quitting? <laughs> you are my hero! Woo! Oh, why Nicoderm CQ? Well, I'm not a superhero. Yes, you are. I never got how these things work. Okay, you just wake up. Put one on. Just one. That's what's cool. One last 24 hours. So, what are we waiting for? Helps calm cravings all day long. And the steps? You step down gradually. So you're free. You're not a superhero? You don't have to be. You've got Nicoderm CQ. Get online with MSN Broadband. Chicago Use it to order prints of Chicago photos. Use it to listen to Chicago radio. Chicago, Chicago. And watch ESPN.com highlights of Chicago teams. I love it. Then email friends that you're coping with the job transfer just fine. Want an internet service you can really use? MSN from Microsoft is the great alternative to AOL. MSN, more useful every day. This halftime report is presented by Jackson Hewitt. Come into any one of Jackson Hewitt's 3,300 locations today and get more in return. 57 to 37 is the lead. Could have been much worse. The Terrapins had 40 points in the midway point of the first half and then slowed down, scoring only 17 the rest of the way. John Saunders alongside of Jay Billis out to the second half in just a moment. But let's look at some scores and highlights. Starting in the SEC where Kentucky's coming off a very upsetting loss to Mississippi State where they had a 21 to 2 lead and gave it up, lost the game. Tayshawn Prince. Gets it inside, jams it down. Kentucky's up by four at that point. Kentucky played a little defense, getting the steal and then kicking it ahead to Keith Bogans. Bogans has been struggling a bit, and you, Kentucky not playing terrific defense in that first half. Allowed 53% shooting, 6 of 12 from three-point for Georgia. And then you see the long pass for a three-pointer, and that's deep. That's NBA range by Williams. Georgia's within two. But Jules Kamara 
a little too much of him. Watch the big guy run the floor, Jay. This guy moves up and down the floor as well as any guy. He really runs like a deer, and he's been a big factor now with Marvin Stone being gone for Kentucky. He's going to have to play increased minutes, but what a tremendous coaching job Jim Herrick was done with this Georgia team. Nobody thought they'd be apt anywhere on the map, and they're 12-2 and two and could pull off a big upset here. Any problems with Kentucky? It's back-to-back -back losses. Well, I mean, if they lose at home to Georgia, it will be a problem, especially since Tubby Smith came from there. Florida and Tennessee. This one being played at Tennessee. Brett Nelson wide open. Knocks down a three-pointer. Misses the three, rather. They rebound the ball, move it around. Nelson there, this time from the top of the free throw line. Knocked down the three. Then they come up with the inbounds pass. The big steal. Billy Donovan's squad likes to press. And they get the steal plus the foul as Florida leads Tennessee 16 to 15. Tennessee is six and six on the season. The balls are much better than their record, but they have to take care of the ball against Florida. The Gators force 21 turnovers a game. Alabama facing Vanderbilt. Alabama at 13 and two thus far this season, but just with a one point lead. Now Grizzard averaging 15 points and almost six rebounds a game. The SEC, just like just about every other con or rather conference in the country, in a position where you're not sure exactly where the quality lies. Yeah, they've got so many quality teams, and especially they, from top to bottom, it's a really solid league. I still think, though, when it's all said and done, and you can talk about the, the game that Georgia's having right now at Rep Arena and giving Kentucky all they can handle, and Kentucky's lost to Mississippi State. But before it's all said and done, I really think it's going to be Florida and Kentucky as the two best teams. And those are the two best teams out of the Southeastern Conference, in my judgment, that have the best shot of winning a national championship. Don't you think we see this all around the country at this point this year, though? It's wide open for everybody. Absolutely. There's no question about it. All right, let's move on to the Big East, where things are probably as wide open as anywhere else. Boston College facing Villanova in this one. BC, of course, supposed to be the class of the league. There's Troy Bell, player of the week and likely player of the year. Ricky Wright takes it in for Villanova as they grab a two-point lead. You see Troy Bell taking the ball off the dribble. He is so good off the dribble, also drawing contact and getting to the free throw line. When he gets there, he knocks him down routinely. Also moves the ball around nicely as they do three-pointer, and BC's lead was just at one at that point. Right now, 36 to 35. Boston College again. Now they have the loss, and again, they're supposed to be the class of the Big East. Is this how you see this? Well, I'll tell you, Jay Wright's done a great job at Villanova. Villanova shooting 53% on the season from the field. That leads the nation. The problem with the Wildcats, they turn the ball over 20 times per game, similar to last season. West Virginia and Notre Dame, the Irish were in the teens at halftime, but West Virginia's lead is now down to 45-42. West Virginia, not a great shooting team. Their fine freshman, Jonathan Hargett, has been struggling from the field, shooting only 30%, but having a terrific game in this one. Notre Dame has really fought back hard. All right, stick around. When we come back, we'll talk a little ACC action. When you come to Jackson Hewitt for your taxes, you'll get a super fast refund. In fact, our typical refund is over $400 more than the average IRS refund. Call Jackson Hewitt now, 1-800-234-1040. Call Domino's for a free order of oven fresh cinnamon sticks when you buy any large one topping pizza for $9.99. Sprinkled with cinnamon sugar and served with creamy icing, they're tough to resist. So call now, because at Domino's, we've got the dinner thing covered. Get the door, it's Domino's. No time that Winter X Games 6 in Aspen, sponsored by Mountain Dew, begins February 1st on ESPN. Is Mountain Dew in serious jeopardy? This generally harmless male will defend his domain with basic animal instinct. A fierce battle rages. Yet in the end, to the victor go the spoils. Hey man, how you feeling? Not bad. Until next time, do the do. Honda's got big deals on tours, cruisers, ATVs, and off-road bikes. You can get financing as low as 2.9% on select models. Or ride off with no down payment, zero interest, and zero payments for three months with your Honda card. It's a new year, and we're ringing it in with big deals. What do these people have in common? We all read in Fisherman. 
In Fisherman readers know that by reading in Fisherman magazine, they're guaranteed to catch more and bigger fish while they get their money back. Call now for this special TV offer, and you'll also receive five more regular issues, two big special issues, the In Fisherman Secret System book, and an In Fisherman decal for only a dollar a month. Decide not to subscribe, you simply write cancel on the invoice that you receive with your free issue. Either way, the issue is yours to keep. Call 1-888-246-3474. 57 to 37 is the halftime lead. The Terrapins with the big lead over the struggling Tar Heels. The second half still to come, but while we're in the ACC, let's talk about what a wacky weekend it Anytime was, including this one. Duke, the number one team in the nation, loses at Florida State. That happened on Sunday. This is a team that lost to American and Western Carolina. And yes, this celebration, I would think, is deserving, not so necessarily of Clemson. They knocked off Virginia after losing to Yale at home, Clemson had. But Clemson's a team that's been there before. You wouldn't think they'd be as excited, but it just shows and illustrates what we were talking about in the last segment, that you don't know what's happening on a given night. Well, when the Ivy League comes in and beats up on the <laughs> ACC, you're allowed to celebrate a little bit. But I, I really look at the ACC as a two-tiered conference. You've got four really, truly outstanding teams in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Maryland, Duke, Wake Forest, and, and Virginia, even though Virginia started off the, the conference season 0-2. And, and I would throw NC State in there, sort of in the middle of those two tiers, with a chance to go to the NCAA tournament. The the bottom half of the league, however, is not good. They have not performed well. Notwithstanding Florida State's big win over Duke, and it was a great win for Steve Robinson and his program, the Seminoles cannot pull that upset unless Duke gives them a lot of help. So it's going to be important for anybody that wants to win this league, and I'm speaking primarily of Maryland, to handle the bottom half of the schedule if they want to win a championship. You have got to beat the teams you are supposed to beat in the ACC because you can play well against Duke and Maryland, Virginia, and still lose. And for Maryland, they cannot count on going to Duke and winning for a third consecutive year as well. Georgia Tech facing Duke. It's reminded that this one is coming up Thursday night at 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Jason Williams almost pulled that one out for Duke against Florida State. They come up short, and we'll have that for you. Kansas facing Nebraska. Heinrich to find Boshi. Jumper from the baseline. It's good. You can see Kansas at that point, 39-12. This is a team, Kansas, that you feel is rounding into the best in the country. I really do. I think right now Kansas is the most balanced team in the country. They're leading the nation in scoring. Kirk Heinrich does not get the credit he deserves as one of the finest point guards in all of the country. Missouri facing Iowa State. You see that one early on, just one point game out of the Big Ten. The fighting line I have Illinois. It got as high as number two this year in the rankings. 17-15, the lead there. Iowa is a squad that, with the great rebounding of this team, has a chance to go a long way in the Big Ten. There's no question about it, especially with Re Reggie Evans patrolling the inside. Luke Recker is leading the Big Ten in scoring and in steals. And I think Pierre Pierce has come a long way as a point guard. He is really playing well. Fine freshman. All right, this is the first of a doubleheader here on ESPN2. Up next, Memphis and Dewan Wagner taking on TCU and the Horned Frogs. That's coming up after Carolina and Maryland. And don't forget, Jay, later tonight with Chris Fowler and Andy Katz, it's College Hoops tonight. It's all coming up. Let's also look at the struggling Tar Heels who you're watching here. Hi, I'm Rick from Empire Glass. Let Empire Glass replace your cracked windshield and will still pay up to $100 of your comprehensive insurance deductible. And we'll now give you 24 free dinners to any El Paso Barbecue Company restaurant. Over a $300 value with any windshield replacement. And we'll even give you a free 14 karat diamond pendant necklace. So for up to $100 off your deductible and 24 free dinners to the El Paso Barbecue Company. Call Empire Glass today at 602-952-9339. When you think glass, think Empire. Excelling at high school athletics is only one part of being an outstanding student. How this excellence is achieved can be far more important. The AIA Victory with Honor program provides character education for interscholastic and youth organizations with emphasis on sportsmanship and healthy lifestyle choices. Cox Charities and its support of local youth and education programs is proud to honor this year's Scholar Athlete Award recipient with a check for $7,500 to the AIA scholarship program. These students have truly pursued victory with honor. When you come to Jackson Hewitt for your taxes, you'll get a super fast refund. In fact, our typical refund is over $400 more than the average IRS refund. Call Jackson Hewitt now, 1-800-234-1040. Friday. I didn't get in. Don't get upset. I didn't go to college. Look at me. Get out. Hello, Stanford. You Cut. Loosen it up. I'm not getting into your school. Orange County, rated PG-13. Starts Friday. Wow. 
just wait after Labor Day. white after Labor Day. While that was once considered a fashion faux pas, now you can wear white any time of the year. Want expert advice whenever you need it? Come to Office Depot, where our people listen, understand, and help. How can I get organized? With the new generation of handhelds, you can manage multiple... It'd be nice if everything was like that. Office Depot. What you need, what you need to know. After a talking to from Kevin Garnett and NBA Tonight's Jason Jackson, the fellas learned that a smart fan watches NBA Tonight and that standing tall means more than just dunking a basketball. Remember, to know is to love. The run to March is on. Get it all on ESPN Full Court. It's maximum college basketball with upcoming key conference attorney action and women's NCAA tournament games. Oh my goodness. ESPN Full Court only on pay-per-view. To order, call your local cable company, DirecTV, or Dish Network. We're at the half at Cole Fieldhouse in College Park. It's 57-37. Maryland over North Carolina. Glad you could join us. It is, what, Wednesday night? <laughs> I think. Yeah, you're going to be busy. you got some football coming up this weekend. You Basketball game tomorrow night. Then uh, Tampa Bay at Philadelphia on Saturday. A busy week for both of us. You get up at 4.30 in the morning, try to fly home for a day, see your beautiful family. It's... Uh, Let's go to the first half highlights because you're going to see a, a lot of Maryland. Defense steals, a lot of easy baskets. Yeah, Juan Dixon was absolutely sensational. Anticipated so well. Had the conversion off the steal. We had the block shot inside. I mean, I'm telling you something. They were just devastating. Wilcox played really well early as well. And then he scored on a spin move on the lane on the interior. But it was the Juan Dixon show. He was absolutely a human highlights film. Now, you see North Carolina shooting 53% just behind Maryland at 59, but they had so far fewer opportunities. Two to one in rebounds, 15 turnovers for the Heels against that Maryland pressure, and Maryland will start with the ball in the second half. And that's the big story. You know, you turn the ball over 15 times. Maryland's forced the teams to turn it over 15 times for a game. They did it in a half. Baxter, who was very quiet in the first half, Gets a basket here. Oh, he he passed through in that first half, but he's so effective in a low post. He's had five double doubles this year. Dixon is the Maryland leader so far. He has 20. Blake has already tied a season high with nine assists. Well, the one negative for Maryland was their half court defense. But I think you're going to see that pick that up here. Gary was not happy with their effort in their half court defense. North Carolina got a lot of wide open shots. Three and got it. Just like he got a wide open shot. And that's been the Achilles heel for North Carolina. Not only turning the ball over like right there, but defense. Mouton, great tip over to Dixon, but he missed a shot and a good block out by Manuel to get the rebound. And it was too wide open. It he had, was. He had too easy of a shot. And it was one of those mid-range jump shots that guys aren't used to taking. First sticker in the paint. Turnaround jumper won't go. First sticker got no minutes hardly at all last year. Several years ago, he was contributing big time for Bill Gutherich. He had an injury. Mouton for three over a good screen and buries it. Mouton now has 15 and look at this. 65 to 37. Biggest game in the ball game. Capel blocked by Wilcox. Jump ball. It's, Wilcox is just sensational defensively. It is really sad to see that uniform that I love and admire and respect really getting blitzed like they are. I mean, it's unbelievable. And it's just not a one time. You take a look at the entire season, having to go to the last second to beat a Binghamton, losing to Hampton, losing to a Davidson. This is just not a good North Carolina basketball team, Mike. It's as simple as can be. They lost to the College of Charleston by six. I mean, it has just been a monumental struggle for this ball club, only to go five and six. And this is only their second road game of the year. All those were at home. That's the sad part of it all. Yeah, they only played Kentucky. Played a couple games on neutrals. Wide open shots. I mean, he should be making that. Wide open. There's nobody there. Dixon misses his second straight wide open six-footer. You know, North Carolina, when you look at the NBA right now, they have more players wearing an NBA uniform than anyone else. We've got 14. Arizona has 11. Duke 10 and Kentucky 10. Somebody asked me before the ball gotten away with an elbow as Baxter went down, took one right to chops. Somebody asked me before the game, when was the last time you looked out on the floor and did not see a first-round draft choice in a North Carolina uniform? 
And the answer was never. Exactly. You just can't remember that. But there aren't any out there this year. Well, not whatsoever. Adam Boone back the other way. But they're a program that can get healthy quickly, just like a Notre Dame in football, a Michigan in basketball. Those schools can be down for a year or two and get back quickly. Moton fouled on the way in. They just got a commitment from a seven-footer yesterday from out of New Hampshire, from out of Brewster Academy, a kid by the name of Darian Grant, who they feel has a good upside because they're going to need some size. They'll give them size inside next year at 6'7", and they got a good guard tandem coming in in Felton and certainly with Baxter on the way up will draw a foul. I know Bob Gibbons, a recruiting guru, rates them in the top five in America. Unfortunately, the school down in Tobacco Road down here by the name of Duke got another great class. Yeah, they're bringing in something that is uh, going to rival Michigan's Fab Five. Will Johnson picks up his fourth and Maryland, personal foul. Maryland is really happy with their recruiting success for next season. So things have built, built it up. I agree with Jay, though, Bill has uh, at halftime about when you talk about the conferences right now, I would give the slightest edge to the SEC with Kentucky and Florida. And you look at Alabama and Georgia, who's been a real surprise this year. Now you're talking to overall strength. Yeah, top to bottom. And then I'd certainly go with the Big 12 right here, too, and the ACC probably three this year. But it runs in cycles because the bottom this year in the ACC, obviously, is no match to what it's been in the past. But the top is a match for anybody. Oh, Duke yeah. and Maryland. Duke and Maryland's heavyweights match. Anybody in America have a great chance to get the Lang, excellent pass to the cutting manual. He gets the basket and draws the foul as well. And you got to admire Matt Darty standing and cheering for his kids, putting his heart and soul into every possession. Coaching his heart. Now, what are you doing? Tell me. He said, I'm telling you, he's doing one heck of a job teaching and working hard with these young kids who just do not have the kind of personnel that they had in the past. Mouton picks up his second foul, and it's interesting. You know, recruiting is something that if you're at a North Carolina board, you've had all the success you start to take for granted. It's nothing you can take for granted. That pipeline has to continue every single year. And you take that for granted, Mr. Dixon, who could end up as the all-time leading scorer in the history of Maryland. Juan Dixon with 23 so far tonight, and the lead is 25. Not only that, he can lead the conference three consecutive years in steals. And that only happened two other times. Chris Corciano and Bugsy Bogues, two of our favorite guys. Pretty good. Steve Blake tonight, 11 assists, a season high. Lang with a jump hook, won't go back to the rebound. Blake got great vision. to 45. The Heels are coming off their worst ever loss at the Smith Center. 22 points to Wake Forest and they're getting hammered tonight. This may only be the beginning as to what they may be seeing this season against the quality competition. College Hoops tonight on ESPN and ESPN2. These are quarter carrots and these are half. They're beautiful. What kind of cut is that? This is a round cut. If you look hard, I'm sure you can see them. They're fantastic. Scott! Who's the guy? Who is this guy? For the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. These are eight carrots, and these are ten carrots. Make it a Bud Light. Knock it off. I'll give you a buck to quit playing that. All right. It's a deal. Why'd he stop for just a buck? Hey, a buck buys a lot when you dial 10, 10, 2, 20. All calls up to 20 minutes for 99 cents. Yeah, and 7 cents a minute after 20. 20 minutes for 99 cents. That rocks. Oh, no. Anybody? Got a request? Man, you need some help. Dial 10, 10, 2, 20. 
Surprisingly, your finer hotels don't offer hourly rates. Not to worry. With a bit of bravado and a keen sense of timing, can I get some more chocolates? You too can enjoy life's little luxuries. Like the superb taste of Taco Bell. Great tasting, high quality food even the common man can appreciate. No, please open the door. I'm not decent. Open the door. You know I'm keeping the robe. Score a crunch of taco and bean burrito together, just 98 cents. With better beef, beans, and tortillas. For a tasty deal, think outside the bun. Dear Kurt, how is training camp? Are you getting along with the other boys? This new chunky soup will fill you up right after a fun-filled day. No, no, no! New chunky beef rib roast with potatoes is loaded with lean chunks of savory rib roast for a taste of home while you're away. Lights out! I miss you, Pumpkin. Love, Mom. <laughs> you all right, Kurt? <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. New Campbell's Chunky Homestyle Classics. Like Mom used to make. Back to action in Maryland and more of the same. The run and gun Terps are now up by 31 over North Carolina. What a pass by Blake. He just missed. It was unbelievable. Cable hits it. Now they try to go length of the court and it's picked off by Cable back the other way. Blake with 13 assists tonight, matching the best game ever. Boone with a long jump shot, no good. Follow is good. This is the best I've seen Maryland play and watching them this year. I mean, they're really playing well in their transition game, their defensive effort, and obviously I know the competition is what isn't what the level that they faced when they faced Oklahoma and Arizona. Will Cox with the miss. Blake got it back. Still really playing well. and he's hit four three. You know, when you look at the second guard spot in America, Cable knocks down a long three. Right now, it's pretty tough to say that Juan Dixon will not be the best second guard in America. And there are some good ones in Jacobson from Stanford and Wrecker from Iowa. But I'm telling you right now, if I had a vote right today for my All-American second guard, it would be Juan Dixon. Well, you look at the combination of things he does. He's a tremendous defender. He anticipates so well. He's perfect for their system. Four years in a row, they've had the steals leader in the conference. Blake, another great dish, and Baxter is fouled by Manuel. Blake is just taking the defense of North Carolina apart and having a field day finding the open man. He was so focused before the game. I went up to him. I said, man, you're ready to play. He was here like at 4.30, walking around, ready, getting his mindset. Look at those numbers. He's hoping to be the third guy guy in career in the ACC to go to a thousand or better assist. The other two, again, two of our favorites. Bob Hurley, who did it down at Duke, and Chris Corciani. Check in with John Saunders. John, what do you have? All right, Mike, Georgia against Kentucky, and this one is going to go down to the wire. First, Daniels will find Hayes, knocks down that shot as Georgia has the lead, but then Bogans to Fitch. He drops in a three. Kentucky back on top, now tied at 82. All right, thank you, John. If you just joined us here, the scoreboard is correct. It is 80 to 52. That's a great story, by the way. Jim Herrick doing one heck of a job with that Georgia team. Good defense inside by Lang as he wouldn't allow the follow. Here people. comes Scott on the run. Melendez who has checked into the ball game and hits it. Melendez got good athletic ability. He's been around in the program quite a bit. He's going to get some PT, some playing time. Trying to take advantage of it. 50 years senior. I mentioned Georgia. They're 12 and 2 right now, Mike, and nobody knows about it, the Bulldogs. Baseline jumper, Taj Holden halfway down. Came back. Melendez ahead of the pack. And chased it down. Williams is also back in for the heel. And here's a travel on Lang. It's going to be so frustrating sitting there, Matt Doherty. I wonder what goes through his mindset now, knowing what he has to face all year long. 13.30 to go in the ballgame. Terps on cruise control against the Heels. Some situations call for trucks with more power. So engineer Mark Verone and the team have made GMC Sierras the most powerful line of pickups in the world. And to help manage all that torque, they've also given Sierra technically advanced braking systems. Mark may be obsessed with power, but he's not crazy. From professional grade people come professional grade trucks. Tell me something good. 
When you come to Jackson Hewitt for your taxes, you'll get a super fast refund. In fact, our typical refund is over $400 more than the average IRS refund. Call Jackson Hewitt now, 1-800-234-1040. These people are making a New Year's resolution to enjoy life. They all called Hair Club. If you feel good about yourself, you'll be able to accomplish anything you want. It was the best phone call I ever made. I'm very happy that I called Hair Club. And to sum it all up, there is a cure for baldness. It's called Hair Club. Make your resolution. Call 1-800-HAIR-CLUB today. In the Big East, Boston College and Villanova tied at 47 apiece five minutes into the second half. Buchanan finds Sullivan. Nice drive, uses the glass. Right now, Nova has a seven-point lead. All right, John, thanks very much. And here the lead is 26, 13, 30 to go in the ball game. That's another real surprise team. Villanova this year only with two losses. And wait till he gets his players, Mr. Wright, next year. He's got a class with Jason Fraser coming to Villanova, a big guy that everybody wanted, including North Carolina. Look at Dixon now. Is he chasing some history or what? Incredible. Look at those people he's chasing. Lenny Bias, 2,149. And that is in the realm of a possibility if they advance, which they should, in the NCAA tournament. And the Steels record is also an ACC record set by Johnny Rhodes. Dixon out of the corner. Juan Dixon is fifth three-pointer. Oh, he has 39. Remember, Mike, in the first three minutes, I said put 30, 30. in the book. 30 in the book. You can I think see. he's going to make it. Yes, sir. He's got a great shot if he gets the P2. Melendez got it down low to Williams. He couldn't handle it on the baseline. And Jeff Blake is working on a career night with 14 assists, Dick. Take a look at the way he's breaking down the defense. There is the great diagonal pass. There he is splitting the defense with the little thump down. There's the great vision to the offside. I mean, he's just making magic with his passes. Back to live action, and Nicholas is in there with Blake in the backcourt. Nicholas has really worked hard to improve his ball handling skill. Well, with the loss of Miller, now he's had to play some wing as well. They rotate seven players playing 20 minutes a ball. Good outside shooter. He's got that pretty line drive jumper. Nicholas hits a three. The lead has grown to 32. Came out of Long Island Lutheran, where they've had a lot of success, especially years ago. They had a great player years ago, but a Wayne McCoy went out to St. John's. Maryland is going to hit 10 out of 14 three-pointers. Taj Holden with another block. Just a mismatch, Mike. Everybody in love is a mismatch. It's too athletic, too strong, too physical. Two straight offensive rebounds, and the ball's knocked away, and here comes Morrison for Carolina. Too deep. Now backs out, tries to go inside again, a whistle and a foul. You just got to get realistic in assessing this basketball team, Mike. When people look at them, it's no accident anymore when you struggle with the Hamptons and the Davidsons and the Binghamtons. You're just not a good basketball team. Defenders. I was in Kosovo. Grenada. Desert Storm. The Elite in a fierce competition facing the ultimate challenge. Face me like a man! Each other. Combat Missions, January 16th on USA. God bless America. Go online and download behind-the-scenes video interviews. It's fast and easy with Cox High Speed Internet Service. Arizonans love sports. And as an official sponsor of the Phoenix Suns, the Arizona News Channel invites you to tune in every night after 11 to the news show for all the sports highlights. Sports highlights are presented by Fort McDowell Casino, still the one for more ways to win. Located just two miles north of Shea off the Beeline Highway, call 1-800-THE-FORT. And by Mark's Glass Company, 24-hour emergency glass replacement. Your pains are our pleasure. Call 602-257-4329. Became known simply as the drive. There's no way anybody's driving Broncos 98 yards. The inside story of one of the greatest comeback drives in NFL history. Battle Lines, the 15th anniversary of the drive. 9 p.m. Sunday, only on ESPN Classic. You gotta own that territory. Like a gorilla protecting the nest. Buzzy. Coming off their first loss, Duke looks to rebound against the Jackets. Big time player, my friend. 
Georgia Tech Duke at 9, Thursday on ESPN. Georgia and Kentucky down to the final minutes here. Hayes loses the ball. It pops back to him. Goes up, uses a glass, and puts it in. That's on the offensive end. Then defensive here. Bogans gets blocked by Thomas. Then Hawkins gets blocked by Thomas as well. And right now, there are four seconds remaining. Two-point lead for Georgia. All right, John, you were talking, Dick, about the great job Jim Herrick was doing. Inbounds to Capel. 11.49 to go in this game. It is already a Maryland blowout over North Carolina. I'll tell you, Georgia beating Kentucky would be a major win and get them some recognition because that club hasn't gotten any at all. Lost the player last year, D.A. Lane, who went to the NBA draft and didn't get drafted. Gave up his eligibility. Melvin Scott short on the jumper. The rebound goes to Taj Holden. You want to talk about the Eagles and maybe the Bucks snap? This baby is history. My Bucks, by the way, are going to beat those Eagles. You tell McNabb. I hope he can hear me. Sap and company are going to beat them. That Tony, should be a great ball game. Tony Dungy, one of my favorites. Out of bounds. Knocked away from Melendez out to North Carolina. Coming up next, Dewan Wagner and John Calipari's Memphis Tigers go to TCU. College basketball on ESPN2. I sort of like the guy on the right there. I'll tell you, that's going to be a spectacular show, trust me, by Dewan Wagner. Look for him to go for about 40 tonight against TCU. Capel with a leaner and spun out on him. I had TCU against Texas Tech. And if I had a vote today, midseason, my national coach of the year, right in Lubbock, Texas, what he has done for that program. Magnificent. Well, they won. They won nine games all the last year, Mike. Unbelievable. Great foul. That's Gary Williams. I'll tell you what a job he has done. You know, you talk about three seasons in a row with 25 or more wins. He's made the Sweet 16 five times, as has Olsen, Calhoun, Coach K, and Roy Williams. Only Tubby Smith has gone more since 1994, six times. Now he's been very consistent. The most consecutive 25-game win seasons belongs not to Duke to Cincinnati, where they play suffocating defense. Turning the Tar Heels 31. And I had them early against Xavier. I thought they had the best defensive team that I've seen this year. They just have a problem shooting the ball, except for Steve Logan. Blake's got a shot at a triple-double tonight. He's already had a career-high 14 assists. He has eight rebounds and seven points. What a line for Maryland point guard. Yeah, you know, great example. He came out early. He worked hard. He was sweating. He got focused. He got himself mentally. There's something about being ready to play, Mike. Lang against the double team. Going to the left hand. Missed. Knocked out of bounds. And it's out to the heels. 87-54. The lead is 33. And this is something I think North Carolina fans are going to have to get used to against the top teams this year. They're going to have to get acclimated to this because their team just lacks the potential and the ability to compete. I know they talk about beating St. Joe's when they were number 15, but St. Joe's was without Marvin O'Connor. That's like an unbelievable scoring whiz out of their lineup with Jameer Nelson. Blake to Mouton. Number 33, Randall, in for Gary Williams, whose team is exceptionally deep again. And they seem to have a great rotation. I have such admiration for that uniform and what they've achieved over the years. I you see that little jumper hook in the lane. And I don't like to see them humiliated because they are flat out being embarrassed. Down by 33 with just under 10 minutes to go in the game. Well, the lob pass inside knocked away. Like the sad part is they never won the game. Never won the game. Never had a chance to win. 19 turnovers, Dick. To, as you said, they were never in the game. They were doomed from the start by all those early mistakes. The worst loss in the history of North Carolina basketball. 43 points against the Lynchburg Elks. What was that, about 1888? You did that game in 1915. <laughs> 1915, wow, yeah, I was there. I was, I'll tell you, Matt Darting knows how to win, and I know his pride is going to make him get this program back to the level where it ranks and where it should be. Just like a Notre Dame in football, I believe a Tyrone Willingham's going to get that program back to where it belongs. The Lynchburg Elks? Lynchburg Elks. 
Now, you've got to tell me if that, was, if that was the college nickname at the time or it was the Elks Club. <laughs> Just like I saw one day, you know, University beats Clemson and beats Penn State, but they can't beat McAllister. I didn't know who was McAllister. Texas, I three, hope. A Division three team, yet they beat Penn State and Clemson. 89-59. The Heels hoping this will not get the record territory, and first sticker stepped on the end line, another turnover. How wacky is college basketball when you see last week 11 teams on a weekend ranked in the top 25 get beat, four unbeaten teams go down. It's just so wacky. The parody's unreal. The three-point shots revolutionize the game. Kids leaving early. I've made it a situation where it's tough to dominate year in and year out. Andre Collins, number 10, is into the ball game for Maryland. Taj Holden, double team. He was working on a shot. Oh, here. Uh -huh. Collins with a miss. Now, you don't want to embarrass people now. You don't want to pour it off. Gary understands that things run in cycles. If you join this late, it has been North Carolina swamped from the very beginning of this ball game. 89-59 the score right now. The Terps have shot well from the outside. Their pressure defense has turned it over. And if you imagine if North Carolina would shoot better than 50% in the first half, where would we be? Mouton, a little baseline jumper, won't go. Fight for the rebound. Baxter got his hands on it and then lost it. Baxter coming off of that ankle injury. And Dixon was standing up like saying, Coach, can I get more PT? Can I get more PT? He doesn't need any more PT. You don't want to take a chance of an injury. we got a long season, Mike. Players don't think about injuries, Dick. They think about records and numbers. <laughs> Here's a reach-in steal. Holden gives it up. Andre Collins throws it away. Andre tried to make that little drop bounce pass in for the layup. Hey, you know, North Carolina State, what a salute let's give out to Herb Sendick, a guy that's been under Absolutely. unbelievable pressure. Yet this club this year has some chemistry. See, I didn't think they had chemistry with Thornton and Inge. There was something lacking. Yeah. This club with the freshman Julius Hodge and Grundy, the veteran, really playing well and should be in the NCAAs this year. Boone tries time. to dribble it, it behind his back, did a terrible job of it. Blake on the other end of an assist from Mouton. Yeah, Mouton says, I got to give Blake one. Maybe he'll give it back to me now. And Maryland is in the 90s with 7.39 to go in the game. And with Dixon sitting on the sidelines. You know, North Carolina State hasn't been in the NCAA since 1991. There's another turnover. Oh, holy oh, cow, are you kidding me? Oh, he's flying in the sky. Dale, oh. that is Jordan-esque. He yes, took off from the line. Yes, jam. He was flying from the foul line. And he did it in a game, not in a Duncan contest. Oh, this is unreal. Watch this. Here goes Wilcox. He's from Raleigh, North Carolina. How did you let him get away, Herb Sendick? How did you let him get away? Up, up, and away. Jam City. Slam, jam, bam. Well, there's the steal. Tries to go around the back. Not pretty. Here's Mutox. I'm going to make like the assist man. And I'm going to give it up to my buddy, Mr. Blake. There it is, Mr. Blake. I'm going to give you a deuce. Wilcox out of Whiteville, North Carolina. He is a gifted athlete. And the Terps, watch how far he takes off from Raleigh, North Carolina. Yes, sir. Look at him right from the foul line. There he is, flying through the sky. A high rise, up, up, and away. The Skywalker. 90-59. Mouton with a rebound. And here comes the and Collins forgot one thing, you gotta take the ball with you. He's really trying so hard, the kid. 7.09 to go in the ball game. Terps all the way. Want to see a bright idea from Crest? It's dual action whitening. It not only whitens your teeth, it helps keep them whiter by repelling new stains. For a smile that nothing can tarnish. Dual action whitening from Crest. You want to make a quick call, dial to the center. It's 1 800 C A L L A T T. It's free for you and cheap for them. <laughs> Two minutes bad acting. Well, at least I know how to skate. Save big bucks on every call. Just dial 1 800 Call A T T for collect calls. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thanks for all your help. It's my job. Wow. Honey, can we start now? 
Yes. Yes, we can. We know how you feel, and that's why we're here. Circuit City. We're with you. Sweetie. Yeah, just put that anywhere. You see the coaches shake hands, and you wonder which one's the happy one and which one isn't too happy. It's usually the one who's listening who's the one who lost the game, and that's the way it stands. Georgia over Kentucky. Right now, Boston College trailing Villanova 56 to 48, and also in the Big East, Notre Dame and West Virginia tied at 64. Mike and Dick. All right, thanks, John, very much. And Georgia with another big win tonight. Wow, that's unbelievable. What a job. You talk about a guy that should be in a hunt for coach of the year if he continues. It's amazing. You have to know his personality. They won that game, I believe that was in Lexington. And that's right after Kentucky had lost to Mississippi State after they had the 21 to 2 lead. Got to look out for those West Virginia guys, Dick. They'll get you every time. Wow, it's incredible. That's right. He's from down here. Played against Jerry West in high school. Said he held him to 41. He did? Wow. I played against Oscar Robinson in my dreams when I was at Seton Hall, and he got 56 on the ball. He got a legitimate 56. Will Cox out of nowhere, but that's goaltending, and he can be spectacular inside, can he? There he is out there with those legs. They went nuts. The crowd went crazy when he made that dunk because he's missed that shot all year, they said. <laughs> well, you can't be the second guy over on a jump hook. He will reach it and steal by Scott. Short Lang with a follow, and he can't hit it. I'll tell you what, I feel so bad when I see North Carolina in that uniform getting blitzed like this. I feel so bad for the Billy Cunninghams, the Phil Fords, the Cubs, the Alphonse Jamesons, years ago, the York Larises, the Sam Perkins, the Rosenbluths, the Charlie Scotts. Think about all those greats. Lang has been very silent tonight. Has had very few opportunities inside. I think Matt Darty should have went and got his buddy down here in Washington. He played with in college by the name of Jordan and put him in a uniform to help him out tonight. Collins outside. He still has a year eligibility, doesn't he? He only played three in college. That's right. Inside Alani Baxter for the jam. 95-61. They're trying to get him minutes because he's missed action because right. of his ankle. That's the reason he's out there. Reach in by Collins, who's in there as the actually the third point guard on this ball club. You know, you think about Dixon, he has a chance to get 2,000 points this year. As you look at him seal off inside, uses that body so well, was brilliant last year in a run to the final four. He can become the fifth player ever to get 2,000 points along with Lenny Bias and Albert King and Adrian Branch and John Lucas. First dipper is back in the ball game. So is Will Johnson with those four fouls. Johnson loses the ball. Collins, one on two, takes them himself and scores. Mike, I'm going to let you play the role of a coach right now. Uh -oh. I want you to be Coach Patrick. You might call up your buddy Theismann and your buddy McGuire for a little help, but I want you right now, you're Matt Dart. How do you regroup this team, facing Virginia now, then you go on a road trip after that, and you've just suffered the most humiliating loss at home in 16 years, the worst defeat. Now you go on a road and get blitz like this. How do you get them back? I think you have to find out what you do best and try not to get away from it. To me, it looks like North Carolina is trying to do an awful lot of different things, most of which aren't working. The one thing that surprised me tonight is Lang is one of your best players. Lang rarely touched the ball in a position where he could score. I think Chris Lang's got to get the ball more inside, and I think Cable has to get it more. Yeah, those two guys got to take most of their shots. I agree. And I think they got to abandon so much thinking 3-3-3 three, 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 and right. get a little bit more half-court execution. But again, it's tough if you're not getting a solid point guard play. Blake for three. Of course, our advice in uh, Starbucks four dollars gets a cup of coffee. I think he's going to get Blake out of the game. Blake had a brilliant game. Burr sticker will score on the goaltend. It's 100 to 63. Blake was only two rebounds short of a triple double. And he's going out with close to five minutes left on the clock. Gary Williams got to salute him. His kids played really well. That backcourt, they're pressured defensively in the first half. Just broke this game open, getting 15 turnovers and converting ball. Check it one away from a triple. A career high 15 assists. I'll tell you, the two guys that hurt them when they lost Oklahoma, Oma was a brilliant junior college player, Jamari Brown. 
really dominated on a glass inside. Ryan Randall scores. Mike Grennan, number 21, is in for the first time for Maryland. And it's 102 to 63. This is approaching the worst defeat in the history of North Carolina basketball. It's also approaching the most points that they have ever given up. And this could be a watershed night. And covers all the worst beat loss at the Smith that suffered at the Smith Center. Worst defeat they suffered there. Gary was telling John Feinstein and I before the game, a fine writer who's got another book coming out soon. When we're talking, he said, hey, Oklahoma just dominated us in the second half and kicked our butt on the glass. 102.65, 3.56 to go. Call Domino's for a free order of oven fresh cinnamon sticks when you buy any large one topping pizza for $9.99. Sprinkled with cinnamon sugar and served with creamy icing, they're tough to resist. So call now, because at Domino's, we've got the dinner thing covered. Get the door, it's Domino's. Tell me something good. When you come to Jackson Hewitt for your taxes, you'll get a super fast refund. In fact, our typical refund is over $400 more than the average IRS refund. Call Jackson Hewitt now, 1 800 234 1040. Hey, Jim, you hear about Chanco Wireless? I just ordered 200 shares. I went for 300. I locked in at 2510. I got it for 2505. But we ordered at the same time. That's too bad. Well, how, why did your broker get it cheaper? Because Ameritrade doesn't play favorites. They go to multiple market centers to look for the best price. Well, my broker does that. Don't they? I don't know. Some brokers buy from networks they own. Sometimes they sell you stock out of their own portfolios. And sometimes, when you're really mad, your neck gets all blotchy. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Fine. Attention, everybody. Please do not talk to Tom about his unfortunate stock purchase. See me for details. Switch to Ameritrade for better auto routing. Open your account today and get 25 commission-free trades. Restrictions apply. For details, visit Ameritrade.com. Nickel for your thoughts? <laughs> In the Big East, Notre Dame with a two-point lead over West Virginia. John Hart comes up with a three. Rainbow won't go down. Rebounded and... You can also see Notre Dame wins that one by three. And Boston College trailing Villanova by six. John, thank you very much. We do not have a close game. We haven't since the start. It's 102-65. Number 14, Jonathan Holmes. Wilcox, nice block by Burstecker. Maryland within four, scoring the most points they have ever scored against North Carolina. It was 106. Scott for three. He shot that really comfortable. You could see yes, they reversed the ball, had a good look at the basket. Shot it in rhythm. Yes, he did. It was within the offense. Good ball reversal. Jonathan Holmes is also in. McCall got, in from Maryland. He's got to find a way to sit on a rotation and play a certain rotate rotation. Tomorrow night on ESPN, 9.30 Eastern, an important ACC matchup. Tony Akins and Georgia Tech go against Jason Williams and the Duke Blue Devils from Cameron Indoor. Do you think Jason worked on a free throw line yesterday and the day before? You would hope. Duke as a team was 7 of 19 in that loss to Florida State. You know, it's amazing because the kid is such a clutch player. I think he knocked down eight threes in that game against Florida State, but yet goes 0 for 6 on the free throw line, and usually clutch time. I'll tell you, his performance against Kentucky was the best I've seen this year. That Kentucky Incredible. game was as much fun to watch. I had a chance to be at home and watch that ball game. And it was very reminiscent of the other <laughs> Kentucky game that everybody remembers, which was such a great yeah. game. But that was a magnificent game to watch. Now, Matt Doherty in a situation where no North Carolina coach has ever been. This is going to be a difficult season. How does he handle it, the expectations and the pressure? Well, you know, I think Matt Doherty, if his kids would play with the intensity and emotion and a passion that he puts, and I know how special it is for him to be sitting there coaching at his alma mater and the love he has for that jersey. And I know it's tearing his gut in on the inside, but the bottom line is he will come out ultimately a winner. He's going through a tough time right now. They will get the players and turn this around. Obviously, Mike, they can't turn it around this year. Those streaks are history. The 37 right. in a row, top three, the 31 years of winning 20 or more games, 27 consecutive NCAA birds. If those happen, he should be enshrined somewhere. Absolutely. Incredibly. 
to but, take him to the Hall of Fame right exactly. now. Exactly. But the bottom line is he's a fighter, he's a winner, he's learned under great coaches with Roy Williams as his head coach at Kansas when he was an assistant, and obviously being around Dean Smith and Bill Guthridge. I know he will come out on top ultimately. He's going to go through a lot of pain, though, and a lot of hurt this year. Right now, it looks like the heels are going to preserve. Uh, some records they'd rather not see broken, which would be the worst defeat ever by 43 points. Right now, they're only down by 30, I say only. Oh, and know. their worst ACC loss was 35 points against Duke in Chapel Hill in 1969. Well, I'll tell you what, he's lucky Gary Williams is sitting on that sideline and sub, and that he wasn't coaching right now against a guy, let's say, for example, Mr. Spurrier when he was down in Florida, because he's throwing the football up Oh, Steve is still be chucking him. Oh, he'd, be, he'd have Juan Dixon in there firing those threes. <laughs> and he's screaming at him if he didn't. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with Steve Spurrier. Well, I know one thing. His bank account's going to go up, up, and up, baby. Pretty tough to make a lot better deal than what he had in Florida, though. Yeah, well, what is Snyder thinking here? To get rid of Schottenheimer, wins eight of his last 11 games. Come on, now. That's absurd. Things happen in the NFL that are just hard to explain sometimes. Well, Dick. that's why I thought Mariucci should have said bye-bye and go to Notre Dame. Wilcox gets a great hand as he leaves. He's one of the crowd favorites here for his spectacular play. Capel will go to the line. It's hard to believe, Mike, this building's coming to an end, but the new place is going to be really special. The Comcast Center, students right on the floor, over 17,000. But Cole has been so many great games have taken place on this hardwood. Dick, I hate leaving the old places. Yeah. There, there are so many memories when you've had a chance to do what we have done for a living. Started in December of 1955, Maryland 478 and 151 all time, undefeated three times here. Two Final Fours. I remember going to the one in 1966 and also hosted the Final Four in 1970. Capel out of the ballgame, 27 points, and that's been the pattern. Capel is going to get his points, get his rebounds. He just hasn't had a lot of help from his teammates so far this that's year. That's right. Chase has been alone. He's not getting help at all. Williams will that follow, then comes Melendez against some of the Maryland scrubs. Melendez really trying to play hard, trying to impress the coaches, get a little play in time. Good athlete. We have one minute to so hard for this moment. Earl Badu has won basket in his career. They go outside to Grennan, and he buries a three. The Terps have now scored more points against North Carolina than they ever have, 107. And that's Grennan's specialty, shoot the three. Look at little Collins rebounding. He's rebounding the little guy. Pat Doherty, part of a national championship team at North Carolina, where he played along with Jimmy Black, and then the big three, Perkins, Worthy, and Jordan. The most points that North Carolina has ever allowed in any game is 110. That was a game they won against Kentucky. They won at 121 to 110. Wow. Randall makes it 109. They do anything they want, Mike. There's just no defense out there. Wide open shots. Two-man game. Randall in the gut of the defense. Williams double team. That's blocked by Randall. Here comes Badu on the run. Kicks it outside. Long jump shot by Andre Collins. 112 points. The most North Carolina has ever allowed. And that's what he worked on all afternoon, working on his shot, Andre Collins, and he gets rewarded. It was ugly here for Tar Heel fans, but absolutely beautiful for the Terp fans. The Terps have to be ecstatic with their performance. They were awesome, baby, with a tap of the line. 112-79 as Maryland runs away from North Carolina here at Cole Fieldhouse. For our entire ESPN crew and Dick Vitale, this is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching, everybody. Now, let's join John Saunders. Alongside Jay Billis, and a couple questions I have to ask you here. We'll start with the positive. 
How good is Maryland? They're, they're really good. Maryland's got an outstanding team. They've got an inside-outside attack. They've got one of the best players in America. I think the best two-guard in America in Juan Dixon, a guy averaging over 18 points per game, leading the ACC in steals. They've got good balance, and they're starting to get the development of Chris Wilcox, an outstanding six-man, and also Taj Holden, who can step inside and outside. So the fact that North Carolina is struggling, you don't want to let that overshadow the story that Maryland is a national title contender. The bottom line, though, is though, I, I had a chance to do a game against Indiana and North Carolina, losing that game at home. This is a team that is a bad basketball team. And I hate to say that about kids, That's true. but the bottom line is this is a bad team. No, it's true. And, and I think the problem is they're young in key spots. Now, they've got a few players that, that do not have the talent level that North Carolina has become accustomed to. But the truth is, at the guard spots where you're most vulnerable to getting pressured and to turning the ball over, that's where North Carolina is really young. Guys like Melvin Scott, Adam Boone, just a sophomore, Jackie Manuel, that's a real problem for them. I did the Wake Forest game last week that North Carolina had. They turned the ball over 21 times in that ball game. Tonight against Maryland, they turned it over 15 times in the first half. That was the game. And the other story about this one is, though, other than Duke, m the rest of the ACC right now is loving the fact that the Tar Heels are down. And I don't mean that Duke isn't relishing in that. But I'm just talking about they like to see Duke is down as well. But they're not going to see them down for years or Maryland anytime soon. But on the 17th, that one stands out because they have had success at Cameron the Terps. And that one stands out. But it's like we talked about at halftime, John. That's a game against Duke at Cameron Indoor Stadium that Maryland can play well and lose. If they play well in the rest of the games on that slate, they will win those games. That's how good that Maryland is. So I think if Maryland wants to win a championship, the key is going to be how they perform against the bottom half of the league, not how they perform against Duke. They're going to play well when they play against Duke. Whether they win or not, that's an open question. They've got to play well in those other games. You mentioned that game at Duke on the 17th. On the 19th, Duke has to face Wake, so we'll see if they bounce back from that one. Right now, let's return to Cole and rejoin Dick Vitale. Hey, John, thanks a lot. I'm here with the winning coach. Gary, I just said to you, absolutely sensational. I thought your club defensively, the traps, forced 15 turnovers, converted off the turnover, shot lights out. You've got to be pleased. Yeah, that's the best we shot all year, and uh, we made some shots we haven't been making, so that score, I think, is a little lopsided because of that. But I liked our defense. We made some mistakes the first half, but we were being aggressive. I thought we stayed aggressive for 20 minutes. Gary, is this the best performance all year thus far for Maryland? Yes, it is. Um, we were really worried about this game. They had beaten us twice last year, and we really wanted this game. I know one thing, too. You had a feel a little bit for Matt Doherty. You certainly didn't pour it on. You subbed. I know they're going through a tough time right now, but you had to be pleased, I thought, with Wilcox. Certainly Blake was brilliant and Mr. Dixon. Yeah, those guys uh, have to play well if we're going to be good this year. And, you know, Juan just shot lights out. I mean, whenever he was open, he took good, solid shots tonight, which he's a good shooter. He's going to make most of them. Wilcox, he's one of those guys with unlimited potential. You know, we have our battles once in a while, but he's going to be a great player for us. What about Lonnie Baxter and Yankel? Seemed to look struggle a little bit early. Yeah, well, he hadn't practiced much. He ran a couple things yesterday for us, but he, he was his timing wasn't there. But, you know, it was nice to see Lonnie Baxter out there for us tonight. I know you were nervous before the game because the wacky weekend in college basketball is so wacky. Anybody could beat anybody. And today you play a Carolina and everybody had expectations saying you should blow them out. And that's always tough when you got that mindset. It's pressure on the players nowadays because players have seen those games where teams probably shouldn't beat a team, yet they do. And uh, you wonder when it's going to happen to you. Well, congratulations. Great victory. Take me out. How do you keep all that here? Well, I'll tell you, the guy did, his colors. He did a great, great job tonight. Marilyn was super, John, just like you in the studio. <laughs> being carried by Jay Billis the same way he was being carried oh, by Mike Patrick tonight. But again, you, you get the sense from Williams that he really feels that this is a squad that can go far. Obviously made the Final Four last year. The only step up you can make from that is winning it all. Yeah, they've got to continue to improve, though. The one area where Maryland was deficient early on in the season, they weren't shooting free throws very well in uh, November and December, but they've shot it up to 75% since then. So I really think if this team can get solid play out of Taj Holden inside and stepping out onto the perimeter, Byron Mouton uh, at the three spot, you're talking about a Final Four trip again, possibly. And oh, by the way, with Duke coming off that loss to Florida State, that's going to open up a lot of eyes in the state of Maryland. Let's check with some scores and highlights now. We'll start in the SEC. Georgia on the road to face Kentucky. Kentucky coming off a loss to Mississippi State. Tayshawn Prince inside jams this one down, and then Bogans goes to work. Well, Keith Bogans had, has been struggling off the steal. The pass ahead to Bogans, and he can finish. That's the kind of thinking that can get a player like Bogans going. Kentucky trying to move in front and take a little command here at home, but then Williams 
Takes a long pass and nails a deep three-pointer. Georgia is within two. And as Georgia down the stretch in the second half, Hayes goes baseline, loses the ball. Bogans tries to save it right back to Hayes. He lays it up and in. And Georgia hangs on to give Kentucky their second loss at Rupp this year. Remember, they lost to Western Kentucky to start the season. Well, they always tell you don't save the ball underneath your own basket. A mental mistake by Keith Bogans. He struggled in this ball game. But how about Jarvis Hayes? 30 points in this game. And don't forget Steve Thomas as well. Tayshawn Prince, who's going to be the Southeastern Conference Player of the Year, again had 11 points in the first half only four in the second thanks to Steve Thomas's defense Georgia's first win at Rupp since 1985 stay in the SEC Florida against Tennessee David Lee gets ahead of everyone else goes and jams it down Florida's lead is four and then Marcus Hayslip bearing a three-pointer from well beyond the arc three-point game that Thaddeus Holden will knock down a three-pointer as well as the balls will grab a four-point lead and maybe Florida basketball players saying well Steve Spurrier left he's going to take us a look things going right now but Florida has grabbed a seven-point lead Tennessee showing some pretty good patience strong with the ball against the traps that Florida put on in their full court pressure Justin Hamilton Playing the point for Billy Donovan is playing very well. Shooting uh, five of nine from the field at 13 points in the game thus far. Vincent Yarborough had a terrific first half. 16 points in the first half for Tennessee. Vanderbilt out of the gate with 10 victories. Facing Alabama, who has 13 and keeping it tight at this point. Well, Alabama much more athletic than Vanderbilt. But anytime you play a Kevin Stallings coach team, you are going to have to get out and defend the three. That's what Vanderbilt does very well is shoot from the perimeter. Alabama's won 12 straight at home, 27 of their last 20. If you go back to last season, Nebraska and Kansas. It has not been a good week for the Cornhuskers. First, the Rose Bowl against Miami, then watching Jeff Boshi knock down a three pointer. Boshi again with another three pointer, his unlimited range. Well, Jeff Boshi, when he gets his feet set, can really knock it down. When he's not floating on that shot, he is going to hit it. And this Kansas team is just so good. They're so solid. There's Keith Langford, the left hander, a guy that can really slash to the basket, showing he can shoot it as well. Just a freshman. I think they've got all the pieces. John to win a national championship in large measure due to this guy, Drew Gooden, averaging over 21 points, 12 and a half rebounds. This guy has got the complete package, can step out on the perimeter, and this was no contest, just like, just like the Rose Bowl. Uh, Nebraska not able to stay with Kansas. Kansas won 12 straight since losing their opening game to Ball State. You are at that game, and you do love this Kansas team. Absolutely. All right, Missouri and Iowa State, just a one-point game right now, about five minutes into the second half. Missouri's lost three of their last five games. Kareem Rush has been struggling. That's been the main problem for Quinn Snyder is getting more offense out of Rush. When he's not shooting it well, he's got to find other ways to score, most notably getting fouled and getting to the free throw line. All right, let's move it to the Big East. Boston College, supposed to be the class of the Big East, facing Villanova. And Troy Bell, Big East Player of the Week and likely Player of the Year as well, but Ricky Wright will take it. For Villanova underneath using the glass. They're up by two at that point, and then Troy Bell starts to get it heated up. Well, Troy Bell is an All-American in every sense of the word. He can put the ball on the floor. He can shoot from deep. He averages over 23 points per game. He leads the team in minutes. He gets to the free throw line. That's the main thing I really like about him is he finds different ways to score. There you can see the deep range on the standstill jump shot. Ryan Sidney, also a terrific player for Boston College. They form really one of the best backcourts in America. I really like this Boston College team. They're not not that great up front. That's where they've got a little bit of a problem. But this Villanova team shoots the ball extremely well. 53% from the field on the season. Gary Buchanan averages about 18 points per game, an outstanding shooting. And then with a three-point game, Derek.